Mike Owens here, and today I'm joined by the number five ranked strawweight in the world, Mackenzie Dern, who returns to action next month, 1st of October, main event. Mackenzie, great to sit down and chat. How are things with you today? Yeah, I'm good. I'm so excited. My fight's coming up really soon, the last hard week of training. So um, it's another big step in my career, for sure. So yeah, I'm excited. Um, let's let's get the board and stuff out the way. Let's talk about the opponents, Jan Jonan. Um, what do you make of her as an upcoming style matchup and what are her, are her particular strengths, in your opinion? Uh, I think she has high volume. I think she has good technique. So she hits in the right places, you know, um, has good aim. And that's the ones that hurt you, you know. It's like not the ones that kind of come around. Mm. It's when, you know, they get you in the right spot. So I think I the, the, the biggest thing is just to not get, like, you know, overwhelmed with, her volume and her speed. Um, but I also do think that she stays more in the pocket. She's aggressive. So for me as a grappler, I hate chasing. You know what I mean? When they kind of come into the engagement, you know, even though maybe we'll get hit a couple more times, but if we can have that engagement and get to the clinch or whatever, um, it's definitely better and easier to take to the ground. So um, I, I know she likes to kick, you know, that can be dangerous, but at the same time, like I said, for us, that's a grappler. That's good. It's a little bit, another option for us to catch to be able to take to the ground and I mean for the good part for me from what I saw I think Carla kind of brought that out you know which is mm. kind of her ground her ground game I don't think um is that dangerous you know so I definitely think that the ground is where I want to take the fight where I want to get the finish um hopefully get like fight of the night or submission of the night so I wanted to talk about this because it's no secret when we talk about Mackenzie Dern about your illustrious Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competition career. Um, now, in the strawweight division, we could probably debate who the best striker is. We could probably debate who the who has the best wrestling. We probably okay. couldn't debate who has the best Jiu-Jitsu credentials. You you are far and away the best Jiu-Jitsu player in the, in the division, and probably in women's MMA, it could be argued. What is it like having, a, having one part of the game that you are dominant over pot pot potentially every opponent? Oh, it's good. And I think it's like, I think it's one of the, not the hardest, not like I always know the hardest sport, you know, martial arts, but um, I mean, it's just jujitsu never ends, you know, it just mm. is constantly evolving, 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 you know, even like today, like jujitsu from, you know, back when my dad was competing, you know, in 1996 until now, it's changed so much, involved so much because it, every position has a defense and then someone trains a defense for that defense and then some you know and then they just keep creating new positions mm -hmm. you know so it's really hard to stay um you know for people to just to keep growing the jiu-jitsu game you know they really need to stay a long time mm -hmm. to get i think to the level where i am jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. so it's good to be able to know like okay of course i can't lose positions i need to stay tight i need to have good timing you know i can't lose my timing on my jiu-jitsu game but it's good to be able to like know that okay i can focus um really really hard or a lot on a different sport like boxing and I've been training so much my striking and just trying to catch up to the girls you know and um I think I'm getting there <laughs> what obviously it takes a lifetime of practice to get your jiu-jitsu skills as, as high as as high as they are but there's got to come with your skill set a, a, some physical advantages that you, that you must have to be able to progress so far so what do you think are the kind of physical advantages that you think you have that make you so good at jiu-jitsu um, I mean, I think it's more just, I mean, it's like, cause jujitsu, it's for everyone. You, you can mm. have like a the 80 year old, you know, doing jujitsu, you can have a four year old doing jujitsu, you know, um, any type of, you know, body type, but it's, it's more just like the reflex, you know, just, yeah. it's so natural, you know, and the moment you think in any fight, you know, if it's striking or whatever, the moment you start thinking you're one step behind, you know? So mm. I think the fact that like when I'm training jujitsu, I'm not, I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just yeah. going, <laughs> you know? And I think the person's like thinking about what I'm doing, but by the time they think about what they're doing so that they can defend, I'm already on to the next thing, you know? So I think it's just more the, the mental part of it of just, it's so natural that I've done since I'm three years old that, you know, you just flow. <laughs> of course. Um, one advantage you have going into this fight is you've already main evented in the UFC. You've already went five rounds against Marina Rodriguez a couple of years ago. How much of an advantage is it having already gone five rounds fighting a po fighting an opponent who hasn't gone the full 25 minutes in the octagon? 
Um, I don't know. I mean, before before this fight, even before my first main event, you know, I had been training for five rounds for a while, you know. So, I mean, I think, I mean, if maybe if we were back, like you know, number fifteen on the rank or something like that. But I'm I'm sure that you know Shannon has been training like for five rounds for a while, you know. Yeah. Um, so I can't imagine being. I don't know how she is with adrenaline and things like that. You know, every fighters are are different. I definitely think that the fact that it's at the apex is harder, you know, because right. with the crowd and everything, it's way, um, it's easier to get into that adrenaline and to be in the moment, you know, but at the apex, it's like, it's just so easy to get distracted. You know, you just you hear just very random things being said, <laughs> you know, from fans and things mm. like that. And you're just like, focus, 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 you know? So I think the fact of being at apex is going to be a big factor for her or for me or something like that compared to if it was in front of a crowd but i'm i'm sure i mean i'm not i mean i'm not 100 percent sure because i don't know but i can imagine you know she's so athletic and she's a hard trainer you know from what from what i know about her so i, I imagine she's probably been training for five rounds for a while i think her cardio and everything will be on point you mentioned there about training i did want to talk about the the what the waves that you guys are making down it Jason Perillo's gym because there's obviously Jason Perillo has been around the game for a number of years, but particularly you and, and Marlon Tito Vera are kind of seeming to be making waves and kind of together as, as training partners, as I can see. What, what is kind of the, the special method, the special source, if you like, that you guys are doing down there with, with head coach Jason Perillo? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just like the, the our personalities, they all combine, you know, we all mm -hmm. have good, um, you know, good understanding we all get a, we get us three you know we get along so good you know and we're very open with each other and you know that that's what's helped because coach he really, really knows how to like talk to us you know mm -hmm. and sometimes he's saying the same thing to me that he says to Cheeto but in different ways you mm -hmm. know because he understands okay maybe I take it I understand it better this way and Cheeto will understand it that but better that way um but the fact that we both have the same coach and we're kind of both basically like number four and five of the ranks, you know, we're at the kind of the same momentum of our career right now um, that we help each other so much, you know, we're, put, we're kind of almost working the same things and he's training and I can learn, I can see him like, Oh, that's what coach wants me to do. You know? And I see that, okay, Cheeto understood it. And that'll push me. And then sometimes Cheeto will see that I understood what coach has been asking us to maybe before him. And he's like, Oh, okay. So we push each other. Um, we help each other. And yeah, we just, we understand each other. So it's, we're at a really good moment. You know, I was there for his fight. Um, I don't know if he'll be in Vegas for my fight, but um, he'll probably be commentating. He's always commenting. <laughs> He's probably, he'll probably be commenting for the Spanish, you know, the channel thing, you know, but mm. um, yeah, it's really good. I, I'm, we're definitely happy to be representing Carrillo. Um, oops, like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're, we're so happy to be representing Carrillo. You know, he's had so many champions, Bisping, BJ Penn, Chris Seibrook, Cheater Cheese. Um, so if we can bring another two championship belts for him, you know, that would be great. I've had the pleasure of speaking to Marlon. He's a wonderful individual. But I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you and him have slightly different personalities in some aspects. So what is the what is the mood like in the room? Because I would imagine with your very positive, your very up, upbeat attitude, Marlon's maybe slightly darker attitude, slightly more serious is it, the room's going in two different ways. What is the room like when you and Cheeto are in, are in the training room together? Oh, no. I mean, when, when he gets there, he's totally like, I'll, I'll just smile. And he the, he smiles and he's totally happy. And he's like happy to be there and puts on the music and dancing. <laughs> and he's, he has a good time, you know. He's definitely like, you know, gets down and everything for the guys, you know. But... Mm. I mean, when the girl's in, in the gym, you know, and smiling, that he he gets all, like, soft. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> of course. Let's talk about Jonana for a quick second because she's coming off a controversial loss. You mentioned the Carla Esparza loss, which obviously you can take a lot from, but she's coming off in her last fight, a, a close decision loss against Marina Rodriguez. I'd like to know how you scored that fight. Oh, for me, it could have been a draw. <laughs> it mm. was... I thought it was very close. You know, I think, like, as soon as I saw the fight, I gave it to to Shaunan, you know. But I, I understand how the refs could give it to Marina, too, you know, mm. on more of the third round. I think the third round, and I know because I fought Marina, you know. So um, I know how she kind of, how she is, how she kind of 
grows in the fight near the end she starts to put more pressure you know and sometimes you can I don't know like win over the judges by some bigger movements you know mm. and more expressive yes. uh, per- persona you know um, but yeah on the moment I saw I gave to Young Shannon but for me it could have it was a I don't know it could be a win for both or a loss for both you know it depends how you want to look at it, you know because I think it was so close of a fight you know it was a good great fight um I knew I know that young Sean, I think she even took Marina down, you know, which is, you know, she's a striker. So I was mm. like, okay, you know, but yeah, I definitely learned a lot from that fight, just seeing how she did with Marina, seeing how Marina did with her um, since I fought Marina. Um, so yeah, it's good. And on the flip side, you're coming off, I think it's fair to say, quite a close decision win, a split decision win against Tisha Torres in your last fight. So obviously you got the W, but given the nature of how close it was, I presume. There were there was improvements you would like to make on your end. So, what are the biggest takeaways that you have from your last performance? Um. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest takeaway from my last performance is just to not, and not just not just with Tisha, but with Marina too. You know, I think with both of the fights, I got in really good positions. You know, some I ended the rounds in like with Marina, I think in Oma Plata, mm. and on her back on one of the rounds, and with Tisha, I had like the Kimura and you know foot lock leg lock things like that you know so it's i know i'm i'm getting the, the position in my level is so high that i shouldn't be like standing back up you know we shouldn't be finishing the round and coming stay, having to go through okay stand back up close the distance everything again you know mm-hmm. so definitely my biggest thing was just being tighter and not letting the positions go you know like not losing the position uh, when i get it finish it you know if i get there it needs to be over you know i think that's that's why the UFC signed me, you know, was for my jiu-jitsu, you know. So when I get there, I can't be losing. I can't give them a chance to stand back up again, you know. So I'm really just trying to get tighter and um, make that adjustment and not losing the positions when I get there. Of course. We've mentioned jiu-jitsu again, and obviously a bit of a conversation with Mackenzie today, and we couldn't not mention jiu-jitsu, of course. But I'd like to get your opinion on, on something quite topical. Um, is Gordon Ryan the no gi goat? <laughs> um... Yeah, I mean, I think Nogi, for sure. Yeah, I think he he solidified that from the ADCC this um this weekend. Um, I mean, Go Goat is the greatest of all time, right? Yes, so, it is. It I is. mean, I mean, I don't know, I don't know. I think he still has a lot to prove. You know, I think the thing is like because the ADCC is once every two years. You know, but I mean, I know he fought Filipina maybe like a couple weeks ago. Hmm. I think was, you know, he won, but it wasn't like, you know, a submission or anything like that, you know. So I definitely think that there's a lot of improvement that can come. But from where he is right now, he's young. You know, I think he has everything to be the GOAT. I know you have a baby uh, daughter. I think she's two or three years of age. So I don't presume you get much free time with a with a baby. A baby. But imagine Mackenzie Dan has a free afternoon and all she can watch is on you did two players tape who were your kind of go-to players that you like to watch in the sport that you did to the most um andre gavon uh kira gracie um let's see leandro low uh those are like some of my top three that i like to watch that, that's, a, that's a good list I couldn't fault you on that list and speaking yeah. of jiu-jitsu it all began obviously in Brazil and we have a card coming up in January, uh, UFC Rio. Now, you have, I was looking at your record because your wins are one of two things in the UFC. It's a first round submission or it's a decision win. One of those is good. One of those, if we, if we presume you're going to be on the same path, it's either going to be a decision victory or a first round stoppage. The submission will get you will get you a much better chance of getting you on that Rio card. So you, do you <laughs> want to be on that Rio card come January? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Um. Just because I think I fight in Brazil before. Of course, whenever I get the chance to fight in Brazil, I would like that, you know. But for this one, it's just that the level that we're at right now, you know, almost, almost to the belt. You know, I can imagine if I win with a first round submission, or I could be fighting for the belt or one of the top, you know, three mm-hmm. in the division. So it's just I wanna, I want a good amount of time to train, you know. And I'm, I'm past that phase of where like, okay, let me get a fight back to back. Like now. It's important for me to have an intense camp, you know, um, training hard, you know, a good like 
two, three months, especially if it's for a belt, you know, I'd like a good training camp for that, you know, and make sure I come fully prepared, you know, so the camp is going to be more important for me than actually fighting on the, on the real card right now, you know, but um, yeah, I hope I can be there to watch <laughs> and be a guest fighter and just enjoy it. Of course. Let's presume you get the win next Saturday. How far away do you think you are in a perfect world from a title shot? Uh, I think one more fight. One more fight and then the belt. If it's a good a good win, you know. If it's not, then then that changes. It's the particular targets. I know there's I think you're ranked number five, so there's four girls ahead of you. We've obviously got Esparza versus Zhang Wei Li in November. Is there a particular target you're looking you go post Yahoo Shown on? she's the girl who I need to beat to get to the title shot? Uh, no, I think I think whoever loses between uh, Yang Shan or uh, with Zhang Wei Li, whoever loses between Zhang Wei Li and Carlos Sparza could be a good good option for me because or Rose, but I think Rose, I don't know if Rose is planning to fight anytime soon. I think even she's even thinking to go up, you know, but um, one of the former champions, you know, I've never fought a former champion before, you know, so I think or Carla or Zhang Weili, whoever loses, if I get a win over them, that would be, I'd be like, okay, I beat a former champion and then maybe I have a chance to be the future champion. May I ask, what was your opinion watching Esparza, Nama Yunus too? What was your opinion when that fight went, was taking place? I mean, I think they just both respected each other, you know, and both was waiting and waiting. <laughs> then they both waited too much, you know, but it happens, you know, I know it's, I know what it's like to fight someone that they're waiting, you know, and they're like kind of on the on the counter attack, you know. A lot of the girls I fight are like. I'd that, imagine you know? that's so, every every one of your opponents scared of the takedown and the submissions. Yeah, so it's like, you know what I mean. If you don't go out there and just chase them and don't care, you know what your technique looks like, you know that's what you have to do. Mm. <laughs> so you know what I mean. I know for the bell, it's worth a lot, you know, and that's why, for me, I don't I don't judge too much that fight. I understand I understand what happened. You know what I mean. I don't think either of them meant it to be like that, you know. I don't know. I think just the the will to win was bigger than anything in that moment and kind of, you know, it froze everything else around, you know. But I don't think that if they fought again, it would be the same way. I think it would be a lot different. Well, if we turn the conversation back to yourself for one final question, I won't ask you for the very uh, obvious question of give me a prediction for your fight. I'm sure you've got lots of that question in the lead to this fight. I'd like to know we're at the end of September 2022. Where would you like to be in your career come the end of September 2023? What are the goals for the next 12 months? Oh, to be with the belt. I think by September of 2023, I'll have the belt. Um, and yeah, just training and getting better and um, hopefully doing a lot of, uh, you know, traveling and, and I don't know, maybe go to Thailand for a couple of weeks and get to you know, evolve as a fighter and and just keep growing. Well, perhaps, perhaps in this in a year's time, you and Chito will both have the belt, and Jason Perillo will be in the middle of you. But nevertheless, we can only uh, look forward to Saturday night when you're back. Next Saturday night when you're back in action, first of October. So, thank you so much for your time, and I wish you the best of luck come Friday night. Thank, thank you so much. Before Good we finish, me. Mackenzie, how can people find you on social media and any sponsors you'd like to shout out? The floor is yours for the last words. Yeah, just thank you to my sponsors, Kings, Kimonos, and Bet Motion, um, Dexafit, and thanks to all the fans. You know, of course, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't because of the fans. So thank you guys so much. Don't miss the fight October 1st. It's going to be a great, great night. And yeah, let's do it.